Hey guys, welcome back to the New Vision channel where we talk about all things real estate. Now our goal with this channel is about learning and sharing sound principles of starting and growing a viable real estate business or any other business for that matter. In this video, we continue the series on real estate bookkeeping. If you are new to the channel, you can follow the preceding videos in the playlist shown. In one of the previous videos, we established all of the main categories of accounts that you would need to enter the typical financial transactions that would occur in your real estate business. We even showed you how you would enter a few of these transactions. Since it is simply not possible to list how you would enter all of the possible transactions that can and will occur in your business, we thought it would be helpful instead to understand the six simple rules that you should follow in order to enter any financial transaction that occurs in your business. Firstly, let's remind ourselves that your business exists to offer goods or services to customers who are outside of your business. And this in exchange for payment or value that flows into your business. Furthermore, in order to offer your goods or services to your customers, your tenants in this case, you are likely going to need to interact with others, such as creditors, vendors, who are contractors, and even yourself as an owner. So fundamentally, all financial transactions that happen in your business can be categorized as one of three types. The first are transactions that cause value to flow from the outside world into your business. The second are transactions that cause value to flow within your business. And finally, transactions that cause value to flow from your business to the outside world. So rule number one is first to determine to which of these categories does each transaction belong? We pointed out in a previous video that all transactions in your business are actually flows, each with a starting point and an end point. That means that to enter any transaction into your bookkeeping system, you must touch at least two accounts. This is rule number two. And I say at least two accounts because it is possible to have a transaction that starts from one account and ends at two or more different accounts and vice versa. But that is a complexity that we will deal with in a later video. Now that you know each transaction is a flow with a starting point and an ending point, your next job then, which is rule number three, is to determine the starting point of the transaction. And to do this properly, you have to remember rule number one. Meaning, is this transaction causing value to flow from outside into your business or causing value to flow within your business or causing value to flow from your business to the outside world? If the transaction is of the first type, that causes value to flow from the outside wall into your business, then it must first be checked in at an account in one of the four main checkpoints, which are income, liability, expenses, or equity. So your starting point is going to be an account in one of these four main categories. And it would be simple to select the right one by knowing the type of transaction involved. For example, if a tenant is paying rent, then that is income. So your starting point will be the rent account under the income category. Rule number four is to determine the end point of the flow representing the transaction. Once again, if you know the type of transaction involved, then this is easily done. For simplicity, we will assume one starting point and one ending point. For example, 
In the case described before of the tenant paying rent, your starting point is the rent account in the income category, and your natural ending point would be the operating account of the business, which is an asset account. Now, if on the other hand, and according to rule number one, you determine that the transaction is of the type that causes value to flow from your business to the outside world, then your ending point will also be likely one of the main categories of income, liabilities, expenses, or equity, as these are also the checkout points for value flowing out of your business. Finally, if the transaction is one that causes value to flow from one part of your business to another, then your starting and ending points can be any of the accounts that you have created in all five main categories of assets, income, liabilities, expenses, and equity. Now that you have determined the starting and ending points, how do you actually enter the transaction? In this case, the essence of a transaction is an amount that adds to or takes away from an account. There are other descriptive items about the transaction, such as the date, who the transaction is with, but we will ignore these additional details for now and just focus on the amount and whether or not it adds to or takes away from the starting and ending points. Rule number five then is to determine whether the transaction adds to or takes away from the starting point. This is one of the hardest parts for most people. For the purpose of making this point, the only thing that we care about is the type of accounts involved in the transaction. That is, is the starting point an income, a liability, an expense, an equity, or an asset account? Once we determine this category, or which category it belongs to, then the following rules will apply. If your starting account is an income, a liability, or an equity account, then the amount involved in the transaction must be entered as an increase or addition to that account. If on the other hand, your starting account is an asset or an expense account, then the amount involved in the transaction must be entered as a decrease or reduction to that account. In the illustration, a green arrow means increase and a red arrow means decrease. Rule number six, and this is the second half of rule number five, which is to determine whether the transaction adds to or takes away from the ending point. Much like rule number five, whether the endpoint account is increased or decreased by the transaction depends on what type of account it is. If your ending account is an income, a liability, or an equity account, then the amount involved in the transaction must be entered as a decrease or reduction to that account. If on the other hand, your ending account is an asset or an expense account, then the amount involved in the transaction must be entered as an increase or addition to that account. When we combine the rules for the starting accounts and the ending accounts, we wind up with a combination of rules number five and six that look like this. The good thing about rules is that you do not need to know how or why they work the way they do. That is a detail. All you need to know is that if you apply the rules correctly, you will get the results that you want. So these six simple rules are all you really need to know to accurately enter any financial transaction in your growing real estate or other business. And that is even if you've never taken 
any accounting or bookkeeping lesson in your life. Now in the next video, we will show how to use these rules to enter some typical transactions and show how simple it is to apply them. For those of you who are already practicing bookkeeping in some form, try it out and let us know in the comments below what you think. Otherwise, let us know in the comments as well if you find this type of content helpful. You would be encouraging us to create more by clicking the like button and subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please click that notification button so that you will immediately know when we put out new content. Many thanks and see you in the next video.